What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and welcome to Gravelwood Cars with Mr. None Other Than Tony Gravelwood Car Sales. You've been here a lot recently. I have, yeah. I like, I, like, uh, I like spending time down here. Do you? I think your stock today is off the charts. Well done, boy. I think it is good, but no, before we go over there to the M2 competition, I want to introduce you to another special surprise. So the last time that I came down here, I bought you your favourite car in the entire world, your dream car. DB11 AMR, you loved it. You didn't quite put a deposit down on one, but I'm still... Um... I didn't love it, and I'm not putting deposit down. <laughs> but I'll tell you what... Are you on commission is, with Aston this, or something? So I'm hoping for it. <laughs> link, link in the description. <laughs> Links below. <laughs> but this is something a little bit different. This is more up Tony Street, because Tony, if you don't know, is a dad. I'm a family man. So? I've bought him a Nissan X-Trail 2017 manual. This is a diesel car. This is actually the car that I've turned up in. Look, that's, that's my stuff in there. There's my yellow hoodie that you will see in a couple of videos coming soon that we're filming today. But I've got the key and uh, there it is. From Enterprise, some rental car. Just for the idiots that do hire cars, they need to be reminded that it is a diesel. Please put diesel in the car. Would you like to know why I have this car? Yeah, I would actually. <laughs> I'd love to know why. <laughs> because my Lamborghini is at home. This car is actually cheaper for me to hire for 24 hours than it is to put fuel in my Lamborghini and drive here and back. Uh, and, and have the worry that you might not get here and back. No, no. <laughs> It's the additional mileage, potential wear and tear, because the more miles you do, the more wear and tear it's going to do on the car. Oh, yeah. And doing M25 journeys all day long could actually, like, badly damage the clutch, which I don't want. No. But I'm not saying that my Lamborghini wouldn't be able to get here, because it would. It might not fit down these country roads that you're surrounded by. But this cost me £70, which is half the price of a tank in my Mercia Largo. Is that, is that for a day? That's for 24 hours. Yeah, I'm literally going to drive this back to Enterprise once I've finished here. That's not bad. Why don't you just get a train not to pick you up from the station? That'd have been, been, been 20 quid. Mm. Today's video is about that car. BMW M2 competition. Now, I'm fully aware that recently there have been quite a lot of videos online to do with the M2 competitions, but there is no man in the UK better suited for this video than Tony. Why is that, Tony? Because, because I bought one. Because he bought one, and he is also one of the first people in the UK to actually I, own it. I think I was one of two or three, honestly, first UK car. So. so this is a real owner's review. Now, what I did last time was I met up with John in Swindon, who owned an Aston Martin Vantage, one of the brand new ones, which you're still yet to drive, and I really want you to drive it. That's and we kind of got... <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> you do. Shut up. <laughs> but... Real Owners Review is literally someone that has picked up a new car or a car that they've owned for a little bit of time and put mileage on so they get to know the car. Rather than being from a journalistic point of view where you get thrown the keys for a day and you have to try and come up with some ideas of what's good and what's bad about the car. You've done how many miles in this car now? Uh, just over 2,000. 2,000 miles in an M2 competition. That is good going. Thank you. And that's the car that you've literally been driving around. Just for the driving yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just been using it. Looks yeah. good. It's in the Hockenheim Silver. Hockenheim Silver, yeah. So I know my stuff. And it has got the awesome wheels. I've seen quite a few of the M2 competitions with the wrong wheels. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, it looks weird. Like the old M2 wheels. Really? Yeah. Well, they've not put them wheels on? Yeah. <laughs> Odd. Yeah. So, Tony, you're going to drive this car first, and then I believe we're going to switch halfway through, and then I'm going to have my first experience in an M2 competition. So, uh, I think, start this beast up. I'm going to get behind because I want to film it. I want to get that sound on camera. It's not that exciting. That's really what happens when you put 2,000 miles on an M2 competition. It's not that exciting. And you own a speciali. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, congrats. Thank you. <laughs> and a GC3 RS and a purple man too. Oh, there's a buzz. It's weird. <laughs> Like, I do actually genuinely like this car. Yeah. It's a real well, that's why we haven't sold it. 
Well, no, it is for sale, but, but <laughs> can I explain why I buy these cars? Yes, you can indeed. Let's uh, let's let's get moving. Um, so most of your audience will know that this is my job. I'm a motor dealer. Exactly, it's my job. Yep. Um, so when a new car comes out, I normally buy them yep. and run them as like a main dealer would do with a demo. Um, I use them, I put some miles on them, and it just for familiarises myself with the product. So yeah, when yeah, I get yeah. them in two or three years' time in Park Exchange, I know what they're all about. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You're just doing, this is a, a research mobile. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. you did it with the Audi RS4 when that came out? You got one of, the, one of the first RS4s, didn't you? RS3s, new Range Rovers. When anything new comes out that's mass production, I normally try and buy one, a new one, use it for a while. Yeah. Um, and you get to know it. And I get to know the car. Yeah. yeah. So inside, it is quite similar to the standard M2. It's similar to the M3s and the M4s, which are now ceased to be produced until the new ones come out. Come on, then. 2,000 miles in. Bad points, good points. Now, I know that you're super critical of cars, and you're fairly vocal about it as well. For sure. Yeah. Um, so whilst John with his Aston Martin Vantage basically had like one niggle with the dashboard and said everything else is perfect about that car. I kind of agree with him with the Vantage because in 2018, that is one of the best cars I've ever driven. I haven't driven this car yet, so I can't really comment on it. And uh, if you saw the condition of the roads today, they're a little bit greasy, a little bit wet. It's also cold. So come on then, good points, bad points. What is the M2 competition like for you 2,000 miles in? So bad points. Oh, straight in. Straight in, Here we just go. do the bad points yeah. first. So BMW still don't spend enough money on their interiors. Okay. Their interiors, for me, are still a bit dated. Yeah. Um, they have modernized the clock slightly. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, digital. Yeah, they're supposed to the old analog clock. Yeah. And this is all updated. The screen is updated, as in inside the screen. That's it. But yeah. the actual screen is still the same. Yeah. Th this for me is pony. Like, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, please. It's 2018. Yeah. Um, what? A genuine question. What do those buttons do? Like, what are they for? Is it to save? So it's probably to save the radio stations. I, I, I don't. Like, maybe, <laughs> that is old school, isn't it? No, I don't know. The other bad point is that maybe it's a bit quiet. Yeah. Um, apart from that, it really is very good. It, yeah. it is so much better than the normal M2. Really? I think so, okay. yeah. I, when, I, when, when I first got it and people was asking me how, how much different is it to the M2, I think it's 20 or 25% better than the old M2. Okay. All, all round. Wow. What's that for sale for now? 57. 57. Yeah. Okay, so in the grand scheme of things. A bit under list. A bit under list. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is right for the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what it should be. What's, what was amazing was I do believe you were the first person to advertise one for sale. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. now there's a lot. There's a few now, yeah. yeah. But they're all spec dependent, mate, see? And, and then you get some of them, you ring them up and you say, is the vehicle available? And what, they're, they're actually demonstrators. So yeah. They can't release them for three months. Okay. So realistically, when the M2 came out, it was there to rival the A45 and RS3. I think so, yeah. Yeah, we, we discussed that actually in the other bit. Oh, we've got GTR here. Would you have a 60 grand Nissan GTR or one of these? This. Straight away. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is there anything under 60 grand, new or used, that you would have instead of one of these? RS3. You would buy an RS3 over one over of these? This. Yeah, yeah. Saloon or hatchback? Hatch. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. But, but do you know, just as a daily, as a daily driver, I wouldn't say it's better, but it's as good. This is more fun. Yeah. It's rear wheel drive. Yeah. It's a dri this is a driver's car. Yeah. The RS3 does it all for you. Yeah. You just plant your foot. And you're <laughs> so off. why are you saying that you'd want the RS3? Yeah, but as a, a daily, driver. as a daily. I thought you were a driver. No, too. I can't drive. I haven't got. You're a speciality to drive. Yeah, I'm not. No, I'm not driving. No. But apparently, I'm not rich enough. Really? Called social media. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I should track it and abuse it. And 
because if I was really rich, that's what I would do. Yeah. So. Can't um, wait to see you at track there. Yeah, I'm literally just going to go there just to wind them all up. <laughs> Drive through the gates, park it up in the paddock, and then just sip on tea all day. I might actually tow my. I might get a trailer. Yeah. Put a tow bar on my speciality and tow my GT3 RS to a track day. <laughs> and yes. Then just do that to people. <laughs> It's hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure the Speciale would get enough grip to pull that weight. You could, we could try it though. Yeah. I think it would just be an easy mechanism of a rope or maybe even a chain. It's something that could really damage both cars. Yeah. Ideally a metal chain with spikes on it and then just try and tow it. Yeah, yeah, if it doesn't work, it'll rip the rear bumper off of the Speciale and whatever. It doesn't buy matter. Buy another one. <laughs> buy another one. Okay. Right, can I have a go now? In this? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were in special <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yes, I should stop. Alright, good. I don't even know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> We've literally just been driving around aimlessly and cruising as well. We yeah. really haven't been pushing this thing because the, the weather is not that good. Um, all turning. Turning the brakes are good. Well, we've already got. Get into manual. Yeah, it does drive. It does drive really well with this car. Do you know what? Like, I know I just said I'd have an RS3. Can I retract that? <laughs> I was going to say, that's a fairly bold statement. No, because I, I really like the RS3, but I do really like this car. Yeah. But it's just I don't like this. Okay. So like, it's more. Stop it, BMW. <laughs> Please. It does have a lot of torque. Got loads of ground. Yeah. And it does sound pretty good as well, but I know what you mean, like it is a lot quieter than, uh... I just want to try and get some burbles. There we go, there's some burbles. Yeah. I think there'll be a day, and GTR again, whoa! He's coming to chase us down. Good luck. Do you know what, there's something about this engine that's changed, because the turbo build-up in my M3, and all of the M3, M4 ranges, was so much... I would say more of an occasion. This feels more NA as yeah. you're going through the revs. Um, because if I was to like floor it now, you don't really get that let off that you get in the M3. Yeah. It just kind of this builds. Whereas yeah. in the M3, there's like nothing, 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 and then loads. Yeah. Whereas this, like, it is much more progressive. It's a lot more refined, this car. It is. And do you know yeah. what? I bet if you go around the track, I bet this is probably faster than M3 and M4. Yeah, track. I know it's a little bit, little bit down on power. Depend, depending on the track, I reckon. Yeah. Silverstone probably not. Yeah, maybe. But I don't. This is supposed to be a lot lighter. Yeah, lighter car, mate. It's true. I would be. I would really struggle to choose if I was going to be ordering one of these from you. I'd really struggle to choose what gearbox to have. Seriously. Yeah. I'd well, really I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd. I know you would because you ordered it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I just, I just. Hate manual. I just can't drive, so yeah. I just don't like manuals. I've Two pedals or nothing for you. I've done my uh, days of driving manuals, mate. Are you finished? Are you re have you retired from manuals? Have you officially retired from? Not, I've not officially retired. Oh. I drive them if I have to, but I, I don't say, like I driving mean, them anymore. Breaking news there. I had an exclusive on my channel. And I'm a bit older than you lot as well, so I've done all my days of airing around in manuals, giving it, giving it large, and not really going anywhere. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I just want to get somewhere and be done. Yeah, okay. And the quickest way to get somewhere is in a double clutch. I, I think the M2 competition is a is a fun car. You obviously like it. I really like it. Have really some like it. gripes with it, but that's not the reason why you're selling it. I think actually it's a very sensible thing what you do when you buy these cars. Yeah, yeah. You, you put it up for sale straight away because it's essentially your demonstrator for that period Correct. of time. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any any final words on the M2 competition or is that it? Um. I guess <clears throat> if you could change one thing, what would it be about it? Not the interior, the noise, the noise, slightly. Okay, and I'm I'm a little bit older, a bit more grown up, but it still is allowed. it's still a bit muted. Yeah, um, but I get why they do it. Yeah, and you know we could all be a bit critical about cars these days, but do you know what? It's all about personal opinions. Yeah, and everyone makes a good car. Now. Yeah, every manufacturer makes a good car. Yeah. So it's just about what you want at the time. Yeah. So yeah.
Well, head down to Tony at Gravel and Cars because he's got all cars for all types of people. I have actually. I know you have. Yeah. I've seen the stock. Well, Tony, thank you very much. I'm going to let you get back to your day job, which is not being a YouTuber. No. Although it might seem that way yeah. with the amount of times that you are on YouTube. Literally. You're going to go and sell some cars. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments who you want to see next on Real Owners Review what car you want to see so that we can delve deep into their brains and into their experiences with owning that car. I will see you guys very, very, very soon. Take care. Goodbye. Enjoy your day.